Hello and welcome back to California Geology. I am Dr. Robert Lopez and today I want to continue on with the Franciscan formation and here I'm going to talk about these um, the oceanic crust and upper mantle rocks. I mentioned a little bit about them. Uh, one of the more important features is uh, the California state rock, serpentinite, and really the protolith of serpentinite is this mantle prototype. But also there's gabbros, there's pillow basalts, um, the pillow basalts have a, a, a they they look green because of green minerals and primarily it's it's chlorite and the mineral um, uh, uh, actinolite. Um, both of these minerals uh, are have a green color to them, so it makes the the rock the basalt look overall green, right? So they're pillow basalts. Really, it's uh, you know when the basalt magma erupts from these mid oceanic ridges, it pours into seawater and uh, geologists have actually filmed these underwater, erupting underwater at mid-oceanic ridges, and they, they turn into these bulbous structures, so we call them pillows. Now, um, Franciscan is world famous for this unusual metamorphic rock um, that forms at, at high pressure and low temperature. Low-grade metamorphic rock, but high pressure, and that rock is blue schist. Remember, the blue schist has a characteristic um, glaucophane and glaucophane is like actinolite both of these are are amphiboles but that's a green amphibole this is a blue amphibole and this blue amphibole is is typical of high pressure zones another mineral that forms is lawsonite and lawsonite also forms at very high pressure so both blue schist rocks have glaucophane and lawsonite and ideally blue schist usually is a term that we refer to a as a meta basalt. That's ideally where the word comes from, but it's it can be referred to any rock that's in metamorphose at high pressure and low temperature. In fact, on Angel Island, there are uh, a variety of sandstones, Franciscan sandstones, and they all been metamorphosed to blueish facies. So, in other words, high pressure. So much of the Franciscan is strongly deformed and contorted because the rocks have been drugged down a subduction zone. And the rocks are chaotic in many places. They are a the type of locality uh, to study a subduction zone complex. So that's why it's world famous, right? And so remember, these chaotic rocks are referred to in a subduction zone. Remember that mixture, that French word? Well, that's melange. So they're referred to as melange. Chaotic mixture of rocks, isolated blocks of hard rock, the greenstone, the blue schist, the gray wacky, the limestone, the chert, they're all sitting in a matrix of highly deformed shale. In fact, I think the book even says they're floating in this matrix of shale. Um, the blocks range in size from a few feet to a thousand feet in diameter. They're, they're exotic. Remember, each, each individual block represents parts of different, of, uh, different parts of the oceanic plate. The melange forms a distinctive landscape characterized by these isolated blocks exposed at the surface. Um, you can see a figure tw uh, 1216 in your book. Common landscape uh, in those is underlain by the the common landscape in those parts of the coast ranges is underlain by the Franciscan. Um, just think of San Francisco. Why San Francisco has Twin Peaks, Telegraph Hill, Knob Hill? All those are different rock types. They're these exotic blocks. In this, in this landscape um, uh, in, the, in the matrix of shale. Now, if we kind of look at, well, again, what Mesozoic California looked like, convergent margin, the subductions are going on here. You've got the Franciscan complex with the melange, those exotic blocks sitting in here. And then um, the Sierra Arc forming out over here, the, the Central Valley, Great Valley sequence in the middle, Coast Range Ophiolite cropping out here in the eastern coast ranges. And remember that it's going to be separated from the Franciscan by this coast range fault here. Now, during Mesozoic time, note that we have subduction. There's a Farallon subduction. If we think about today, what is the present boundary off of Central California? Well, today it's a, it's a transform margin. Transform. And that's the San Andreas Fault. And, uh, and the and the North American plate is in contact with the Pacific plate, the Pacific plate. So remember in Mesozoic time up over here, this plate right here, this ocean plate, that's the Farallon plate. 
and the, the, the Pacific Plate is way offshore of here. It's not even in contact with California. But now we're changing the boundary. So something has to uh, enable us to go from a, from a convergent to a transform boundary. And so we're going to do this in, in three parts, right? So I want you to think about during, during Mesozoic time, or really up till about maybe, let's say we're going back to about maybe 30 million years ago, right here. During this time, what I want you to envision is offshore California, we have a mid-oceanic ridge. And this mid-oceanic ridge is the East Pacific Rise, right? So there's seafloor spreading going on here. Seafloor spreading going on here. This other line that I drew over here is the ocean trench. And so we'll put the little teeth on here to indicate it's a trench. So there's subduction going toward the east here. So this would be east and that's west. So uh, this mid-oceanic ridge is, we'll call it EPR for East Pacific Rise. That's the East Pacific Rise. So the plate over here is the Pacific Plate. And the plate that's being subducted here is the Farallon Plate. So the Farallon Plate's going into the trench here. And then uh, that's our trench, and this is, over here would be the North American Plate. or California over here. So there is a convergent margin. North American plate, Farallon plate, Pacific plate, right? And so during this time we have a convergent margin. So an interesting that thing happens at about 28 million years ago. Remember I call this first contact. So another, what I mean by that is we're going to have part of this East Pacific rise come in contact with a trench. So if we draw this, we'll draw our, our, our trench again. But now I'm going to draw a couple of points here. One little one there and one here. I'm going to label the one in the north M and the one in the south R. And they refer to the Mendocino and the Rivera Junctions. And you'll see what they are in a moment. So to the south, we still have that East Pacific rise still spreading out here. So there's seafloor spreading in here. And then to the north, we're going to have a transform fault here and then the, another mid-oceanic ridge going offshore over here. And so these, 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 this ridge now has, is going to have a different name. And so, see what, so um, remember the Pacific Plate is going to be here. And note that it's in contact right here with North America, right in here. And um, then the plate to the south over here is called, this plate here is called the Cocos Plate. And that Cocos Plate is, is currently offshore Mexico. It's the one subducting under Mexico, giving rise to the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. And the plate up here is our, our Juan de Fuca Plate. So what, what's happening is that the Farallon Plate essentially got split in half. The northern half becomes the Juan de Fuca Plate. The southern plate half becomes the Cocos Plate. Those, those are still around. Uh, and then... Um, we're still going to have the, the North American plate over here. And we've developed a little bit of San Andreas Fault here. Because remember, this plate is kind of moving away, sliding this way, and this plate's moving down this way. So we're going to have a little bit of transform motion, and it's basically the birth of the San Andreas Fault. So this M, again, refers to the Mendocino Triple Junction, R to the Rivera Triple Junction. And we'll see that this initial contact occurred about 28 million years. So again, I'm showing a map view, and the Pacific is moving past North America at a velocity about 6 centimeters per year with respect to North America. And then down here it says the San Andreas transform begins, two junctions, two triple junctions form, Mendocino in the north, Rivera in the south. And the reason they're called triple junctions is because at each junction, three tectonic plates meet at one point. For the Rivera, it's a Cocos, Pacific and North American. For this one up here, it's the Pacific, Juan de Fuca, North American. That's where the three plates come in. The other thing that's going to be important here is over time, these triple junctions migrate. They migrate north or south, away from each other. And where they, as they migrate north, subduction is cut off. And the other thing is you, you, um, you lengthen the San Andreas transform. In other words, you make it longer. 
And so I'll show you that in the diagram here. So now let's say we go back to about maybe 10 million years in this one, in this third picture here, and we'll show our, our contact over here. And so now I'm going to show that Mendocino Triple Junction farther north, Rivera Triple Junction farther south. And so what's happening here, we're still going to see our, our Juan de Fuca Ridge out here, C4 spreading. And so this is that Juan de Fuca plate. I'll put JDF for Juan de Fuca. And then offshore over here, we see C4 spreading. And we're still going to have our, we're going to have our Cocos plate here. I'll put C for Cocos plate down there. And again, this is North America, or the North American plate. And then this is the Pacific plate here. So now we have quite a bit of contact now, um, oh, plate. So now we have the Pacific plate over here in contact with the North American plate. And this whole distance is the San Andreas transform right here, side by side motion. So we've, we went from a convergent map boundary here, right? Convergent boundary here to a transform boundary here. And as these two junctions migrate away from each other, we, we lengthen the San Andreas Fault. And now over here, because there's no subduction going on here, there's no volcanoes over here, right? So where you do see the volcanoes, you see active volcanoes north of the triple junction. So you see Lassen, Shasta, uh, Crater Lake, Oregon up there. And as you go farther south, you see the volcanoes in Mexico City, down in Mexico, down there. So that's the only place you'll have to see volcanoes is only where you see subduction. There are no active volcanoes or at least subduction zone volcanoes in this region now. So anyways, that's how it's kind of going. We're seeing this transition from a convergent margin to a transform margin. Mm -hmm.